The ideal workspace supports clear thinking, streamlines efficient workflows, and ultimately lets us feel relaxed and at ease in our space, allowing us to perform our best work. In short, the place we do our work is often as important as the work itself. Hey everyone, my name is Frank Takachenko. I'm a marketing analyst living in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and this is my first YouTube video. With my job not requiring us to work in the office until at least September of this year, I decided to take the opportunity to invest a bit more into the workspace in my bedroom to not only let me perform my work duties more efficiently, but also to provide a space to just kick back and unwind after I log off for the day. This is more of a snapshot of where things stand right now, and I'm super excited to share it with you. So enough of me rambling about it, let's take a look. So I hope you enjoyed that last minute and a half of my attempt at making cool footage. I'm definitely no filmmaker and I typically produce most of my content on Instagram where I post men's fashion and lifestyle content. On that same note, if you'd like to follow me along my journey of learning to create better video content like this, I'd be super grateful if you can give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. So when I was planning things out, I had three primary goals that I wanted my desk setup to adhere to. One, I wanted it to be able to support work productivity during the work hours and also gaming with minimal changes. Two, I wanted comfort and proper ergonomics throughout the setup just because I knew, especially these days, that I'm going to be spending more and more time here. And three, ultimately I wanted my desk setup to be a place that I'm comfortable and happy working in. By no means are the things in this video essential for everyone to get in order to work efficiently or comfortably. Starting off with the most important item of any desk setup, the desk itself. This is the four leg motorized sit stand desk from Uplift Desk. I was incredibly fortunate enough to receive this desk from the team at Uplift to create some general content featuring it. There's quite a bit of research of whether or not sitting or standing is best for extended work sessions and the general consensus is that you don't want to do either for extended periods of time. Instead, it's best to switch things up. So a motorized sit-stand desk that can adjust from sitting to standing height at the touch of a button sounded like the perfect solution to me. Customizing the desk on Uplift's website is interactive and in-depth, letting you choose from a surprisingly expansive selection of laminates and solid wood desktops. These range from bamboo to pricier woods that cost as much as the desk itself. You're also able to select the color of the desk frame as well as other features like power grommets, cable management solutions, and a whole array of accessories. I opted for the 60 by 30 inch carbonized bamboo desktop since I wanted a solid wood desk that was dark, but not too dark. As someone who's always sat at a desk in the past, I honestly wasn't sure how often I'd actually find myself using the desk at standing height, but I'm pleasantly surprised at how often I not only want to stand, but how much better I feel alternating positions more often. When I'm working, I typically find myself standing more often during things like Zoom meetings, looking at performance dashboards, or checking emails. I've started making a routine out of it, and I'm genuinely surprised at how much better my back is starting to feel after a bad habit of slouching in my chair. For added comfort, I picked up this anti-fatigue standing mat. Compared to standing on my hardwood floors, it makes a serious difference, and I would definitely recommend picking one up if you're going to be using a standing desk. 
When I'm sitting down, I just slide the mat underneath the desk and use it as a little footrest. When it's time to dial in and focus more intently on some work, I'll sit down and continue working. The desk frame's motor is very fast, so it's never much of a disruption to adjust the height. With a few different keypads to choose from, I went for the Advanced Comfort keypad, which has four programmable height settings, anti-collision sensitivity adjustment controls, and min-max height settings to make sure the desk doesn't pull or push anything it's not supposed to when someone's raising or lowering it. And for an extra 39 bucks, I would definitely shoot for the Advanced Comfort keypad over the basic one that comes with the desk frame. In terms of displays, I'm using an HP Omen 27-inch 165Hz IPS panel as my primary display for when I'm working and gaming. My work laptop doubles as a second, smaller display, but honestly, screen real estate is definitely on the lower side. I bought this display earlier last year after doing some research on a monitor that could function well both for work and gaming. The IPS panel offers great color and viewing angles, while the 165Hz refresh rate and 1 millisecond response time make it perfect for high-octane gaming. The monitor also comes with RGB ambient and task lights, which serve as great bias lighting lightning harsh light contrast that can damage your vision. I don't really like over the top RGB lighting, so I typically just keep these lights as a single color. This display sits on a Kanto DMS-1000 monitor arm, which is perfect for the monitor because the ball head can turn to accommodate the oddly angled Visa mount adapter. I'm considering picking up a second monitor and moving the laptop to the shelf above the desk drawer to serve as a display source, but for now, this works just fine for me. My work laptop isn't anything special, nor do I use it for non-work related tasks. To raise the laptop and get it closer to eye level for better ergonomics, I have this wooden laptop stand from a company called Oakywood, which makes a bunch of cool solid wood office products. Despite being made from oak wood, I think the stand matches the carbonized bamboo desktop really well. The laptop connects to my primary display via a USB-C hub that's tucked underneath the stand, and the HDMI and charging cable stay out of sight thanks to some adhesive cable tracks. You can't claim to have a gaming setup without talking about the PC that powers it. I built this PC about two months ago now after getting really lucky grabbing an EVGA NVIDIA RTX 3080 graphics card at retail price. I'm not going to go too in depth about my PC built in this video, but here's a list of specs for those interested. I've installed a few different programs to help me mess with the built-in RGB lights on the GPU and processor to create a more low-key color scheme. I'm also treating this PC as an investment not only for gaming, but for photo and video editing as well. Because I'm currently using both a desktop and a laptop in my setup, it was important to me to have a set of peripherals that could seamlessly switch between devices. For my mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Master 2S, a wireless mouse popular for its infinite scroll wheel, back and forward buttons, gesture controls, and side scroll. I picked this mouse up about two years ago on Amazon Prime Day, and I've used it probably every single day since. The mouse can pair with up to three devices and switch between them with a simple button located on the bottom of the mouse. The keyboard I've been rocking is the Elwood RCK from a company called Ozio. This is a wireless mechanical keyboard with backlit keycaps and a unique typewriter design. Personally, I really enjoy its wood accents, long battery life, and the clicky feel of the kale mechanical switches. Like my mouse, this keyboard pairs with multiple devices and switching between them is as easy as pressing a few keys. While I try to keep my desk as clutter-free as possible, I do like to keep all of my everyday carry items nearby on a small desk organizer from Yamazaki. The case on my iPhone 12 is a Sienna leather case from Bullstrap. I only picked it up recently, but it's already starting to develop a really nice patina, and honestly, I really like it. I tend to listen to music pretty often while I'm working, so I like having my headphones close by. The headphones I use for listening to music or audiobooks are my Master and Dynamic MW65 wireless headphones. Not only do I absolutely love their design, but the active noise cancelling lets me tune out any street noise or when my roommates apparently need to do eight loads of laundry in one day. Next to them, I have my Corsair Virtuoso wireless gaming headset. I actually can't say I recommend these at all just yet. I've run into a lot of issues with them and they're actually currently with Corsair for an RMA. So hopefully I just got a faulty set. For desk lighting, I'm using a Dyson Light Cycle Task Light. Apart from looking like it, it belongs in the space shuttle, the Dyson Light Cycle tracks the light brightness and temperature of sunlight where you live which is supposed to be better for your eyesight and concentration. You can adjust light intensity and warmth manually on the top of the bulb or remotely through the Dyson app. I use the light both for ambient lighting in the evening and for when I'm handwriting notes. The glide mechanism for articulating the light arm is very well designed, so I can move and adjust it to where I need it. While the Dyson light cycle is a seriously cool piece of tech, I think I'd say it's a little bit tastefully over-engineered. 
Above my setup, I put up a few floating shelves to display some light decorations and add more personality to the space. I have quite a few plants in my bedroom as I think they're not only pleasant to look at, but help keep the air fresh and pure. In my opinion, a good office chair is one of the most important things you can invest in if you work from home. I've been using the Uplift Vert office chair for the last seven months and I've been really enjoying it. With adjustability in all the right places, plus a reclining back, it's as comfortable to work in as it is to lean back and watch a show or a video at the end of the day. I love having a chair with the comfort of traditional office seating mixed with the design of something more aesthetically inspired. One of my favorite parts of my desk setup is my IKEA pegboard, which holds commonly used items that I don't necessarily need on my desk, but I want within reach. It's great for storing things like cables, adapters, notebooks, and power banks for when some of my wireless devices need a charge. On the bottom hooks, I hang my backpack, which is made by Ism SF. I've only recently started putting this here, but I actually think it looks pretty good. Next to the pegboard is an IKEA utility cart, which stores a lot of my camera gear, Xbox games, and other miscellaneous things. I also dig the burnt orange finish, and I think it adds some nice color to the space. So now moving on to the least exciting part, cable management. Or most exciting part, I don't know what you guys are into. I'd like to describe my overall cable management job as a bit of organized chaos. An electric standing desk with four individual motors, a height control unit, and a central power supply box already creates more than just a few wires, and that's before the actual computer, monitors, and other devices. Not only that, but since the desk raises and lowers, it's important to have enough slack for wires not to get snagged at standing height, but not too much or it'll look messy when you're sitting down. To organize the wires from each leg and the control unit, I use these adhesive cable tie mounts. These mounts route wires to a central plastic cable management box, which came with the desk. Next, to avoid having a clunky power strip laying on the floor, I mounted it onto the bottom of the desk as well with a command strip and some screws. Now, the real MVP of my cable management job is the magnetic cable organizing channel. This one's from Uplift Desk, but there are tons of alternatives floating around on Amazon. This is essentially just a magnetic box with an opening on the side to route your cables into. To keep the cables neatly grouped together, I bought this roll of Velcro fastening tape on Amazon. Unlike zip ties, you can move and reuse these as often as you need. While I think there's room for improvement in my cable management, so far I'm very happy with it. Most cables stay out of sight, even with the desk at standing height. So I actually think that covers just about everything. If you've made it this far, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have some fresh ideas to improve your own work setup. I'll have links to every featured item in the video in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be so stoked if you can leave a like and a comment or even consider subscribing if you'd be interested in seeing content from me in the future. If you didn't, definitely let me know how I can improve. Like I said, I'm new to all this and I'm always looking for constructive feedback to make my content more engaging. So that's it, stay safe, healthy and productive this year. I'm wishing everyone an awesome 2021 and I'll see you guys next time.